everybody. Scott here again from the Jostin Service Center. Come on, let's do another fill-up for the month of October. Coming up in a moment, an interview with an award-winning expert on yearbook design, something that most yearbook staffs really struggle with. We'll have some great ideas and inspiration for you, but first, some news. Hopefully you've noticed the Jostin's Replay It app back up and running again for both Apple and Android. We appreciate your patience. A lot of folks already using it. Some folks have said, well, hey, it looks exactly the same as before. Well, that's true for now. We've changed the infrastructure, what makes the app work. So we should have improved performance and coming up down the line, some cool new features. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully you had a lot of fun the first week of October with National Yearbook Week. A lot of folks took part in our Jostin social media contests. So what's the next fun event coming up? Well, here's a hint. Halloween, end of the month, right? If you have a dress-up day at your school, hey, some photo opportunities there. But at the very least, maybe with your book sales and promotion, find fun ways to tie Halloween into that to spread the word throughout your building about getting your book. Remember, our number one rule here, your booking is supposed to be fun, so go out and make it so. Now for everybody, but especially for high school staff, let's talk about advertising sales. There is a lot of money out there to go get. You go get it, you can make a better book or maybe lower the cost of the book to the folks. Two types of ads, of course. There are personal ads, sometimes called parent ads or friend ads. And then there are business ads. In every community out there, there are businesses that want to support their local school, but they're never asked except to pay their taxes, and they don't ask you to do that. So here's a great idea to help your students do a better job with business ad sales. Find two or three volunteers in your community, maybe business owners or managers. Ask them to come into your school to be sample test subjects. In other words, your students will put their sales pitch together and work it on these folks. And then afterwards, they can say, hey, you did a good job with that, or you really need to do some work on that. In other words, they get some great practice with real business people before they go out into the field to do it for real. What to do with these folks? Maybe give them a free ad if you like, or hey, food, something simple. Doesn't have to be great because these folks want to help their local school. It's a great idea to help to get your students doing a better job. I've been doing this for two decades, and one thing I found a lot of yearbook staffs really struggle with is yearbook design, page design, theme, and so on. Really have problems. Well, recently we talked to an award-winning creative expert on how you can immediately make a better yearbook with better design. Hello, I'm Rick Brooks. I'm Justin's creative design manager, um, mostly for the northeast part of the country. You know what, I truly believe there, there is one reason that it's difficult. It's because we look at ourselves for inspiration. We look at last year's book for inspiration. We look at the year before last. We go back in our own best stuff and try to replicate that stuff again and again and again. And sometimes the stuff was great, but we don't tend to improve it. There are ways to improve absolutely any design, no matter how fabulous it is. There are ways to do that, and it's really being inspired by other stuff other people's stuff, just inspiration, not taking it, but actually being inspired by it. And that's kind of the most important part, is to develop your concept before you start making pages and putting text in, is to get that idea down and then put it on the screen. That's the first step. The other step is to actually use elements that enhance the goal, which is to show the photographs. The first key thing is, is the photography there still needs to be a dominant image. It doesn't have to be an entire page. It doesn't have to be two and a half times, which is what we said for a very long time. It doesn't have to be two and a half times the size of anything on the page, but it needs to be larger. And in contrast to that larger image, there should be an image on that page that's smaller. It's a subordinate image in the same proportion as that big image. If those two things appear on the page and 10, five, eight, 16, it doesn't really even matter, smaller images surround it. It is pleasing. That's kind of how to develop that pleasing design, to get one thing larger, one thing smaller, and then fill the rest in. 
Sometimes there should be things that are the same size. If, if there's a thematic reason to do three images in a row, four images, whatever, whatever the thematic reason is. But for basic design stuff, everything should have a variety of shape, size, and proportion. There should be vertical images, there should be horizontal images, and square ones. There should be a good variety. And if you really look at photography, because we crop things, they're all a variety of images. We never just have all squares in life. We have different things, things that are very horizontal or things that can be cropped to very horizontal. And we really ought to crop images because a lot of them are taken with things like a phone and people don't crop them at all. They're just all horizontal images, all the same. And phones have become so great and so used for photography in the classroom that everything we're getting is a horizontal thing. And that's a bad direction. Turn that phone sideways just like you would a camera typically don't do that. There's got to be a headline. Every every page, every double page spread ought to have some headline and some copy. There should always be something. Not just for journalistic reasons, because these are journalistic things, but for design reasons. If you have great images, if you have a student at your school that can take great photography, and I know a lot of us do, that ought to be featured. That should be the goal, to use it when it's beautiful. Many thanks to Rick for all of his terrific advice. Now, if you'd like to hear the entire half hour interview with far more ideas and tips on how to create a better design for your yearbook, check out our podcast at the address shown here on the screen. And while you're there, make sure to mark to follow our Yearbooking Report podcast so you never miss an episode. Finally, let's talk about another feature on Yearbook Avenue that is terrific that a lot of folks really don't do much with. It's the sales dashboard. Now, if you and your Jostens representative have set up your book sales plan for the year, you should have this feature on YBA. It has some great graphics in there, how are you doing right now, and so on. But there's that area in the middle, great simple tips and ideas that you can use in school. Could be something as simple as put up fresh posters, or move your outside yard signs, or make some new material, or come up with some new announcements, or other fun ideas. Absolutely check the sales dashboard on a regular basis. You can even check them off on the sales dashboard as you do them. This will help you create a better yearbook sale and a better effort. Well, that's all for this month. Remember, fun. Let's make it fun out there. Tell lots of great stories this month, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.